bozza Uti muona Anai nama Anai nuka Hey everyone, I'm Sonny from London in the UK and today I have a really exciting video for you for the Virtual Maths Camp. We're going to play a fun mathematical game called Split or Steal. And this game is a two-player game. So, a quick introduction. Split or Steal is a game based on the famous Prisoner's Dilemma, which you might have heard of before. It's in an interesting new branch of maths called game theory, where when making your choice, you also need to consider the other player's choice. This means your choices are interdependent. So what you need today, a partner to play the game with, two small cards, each saying split and steal, and these can just be small bits of paper, and finally, something to count scores with. If you have some tokens or coins or something like that, that would be great. But if not, you could just use a pen and paper to write down the scores. So this is what the game looks like. And this table is called a matrix. In the game, there are two points to be won. But who wins what is decided by the choices of the players. We have our two players on the left and at the top, the red player and the blue player. Each player has two options shown next to them, split or steal. Since two players have two choices each, there are four outcomes in total, and they are all shown in the table. In each section, the red number is the number of points won by the red player, and the blue number is the number of points won by the blue player. For example, if both players choose to split, we would end up with the top left outcome and the players would split the two points to earn one point each. However, if the red player wanted to split but the blue player chose to steal, the blue player would steal the red player's points and earn two points while the red player wins nothing. The opposite happens if the blue player splits and the red player steals. But if both players try and steal, it doesn't work and no one wins the point, so both players end up with nothing. Now it's your turn. Get ready to play split or steal with your partner. First, Talk to your partner for a couple of minutes about what choice you're going to make. Remember, the person with the most points wins. You are allowed to lie to your partner. Then, secretly choose split or steal and place the card you have chosen face down so your partner can't see it. Finally, reveal your choices and work out your scores. Play the game once with your partner. Pause the video now. How did it go? Did you get the number of points you were hoping for? Did you and your partner tell the truth to each other? Let's think about why the result might have been different to what you expected. Imagine you are the red player. Your opponent, the blue player, has two choices, split or steal. If blue chooses split, you could either choose split and win one point, or you could choose steal and win two points. Two points is better than one, so you would choose steal. What if the blue player chose steal? If you choose split, you get zero. And if you choose steal, you also get zero. So it doesn't really matter what you choose, but let's assume you would prefer to steal so you don't give your opponent any points. As we have seen, no matter what your opponent does, split is never the best choice. 
This mean steal is called a weakly dominant strategy. Since this is a symmetric game, steel is also weakly dominant for the blue player. We have proven that it makes sense for both players to choose steel. Therefore, the steel steel outcome is known as the Nash equilibrium. But look at the matrix. The split split outcome is better for both players, as they both get one point instead of zero. This means that the Nash equilibrium is not the optimal solution. An incredible result. We now know what should happen for a single game, but does this result hold if we play the game multiple times against the same player? Start the scoring from zero and play the game 10 times in a row with your partner. Does your strategy change now you know you'll be playing the same opponent again? Play the game 10 times with the same partner. Pause the video now. Did you manage to score more points than your opponent? A repeated game like the one you've just played is much more complicated because your decision is not only influenced by your communication with your partner in this round, but also what has happened in previous rounds. For example, you might trust your partner less if they stole in the previous round, which could make you more likely to steal in this round. In general, the more the game is repeated, the more likely you will be to cooperate with your opponent, because they could punish you in future rounds if you don't. Using the same logic, if you know there aren't many rounds left, you might be more tempted to steal, because your opponent has less time to retaliate. As this is a very famous game, game theorists have developed many strategies that we could use when playing. For example, you could always cooperate, meaning choosing split every time. Or you could play steal every time. You might choose to copy what your opponent did in their last move, sometimes known as tit for tat or copycat. Grim trigger is where you play split, but if your opponent plays steal just once, you punish them by playing steal for the rest of the game. You could even decide to choose randomly each time by flipping a coin. Which strategy do you think is best? Try playing five rounds, sticking to one of the strategies listed, and see what happens. If you can, swap partners this time. Then pick another strategy and play five more rounds. Play using a strategy. Pause the video now. So which strategy scored you the most points? In 1980, Robert Axelrod made a tournament where he played 63 different strategies against each other to see which one came out on top. And out of all of them, it was tit for tat that won. In general, the most successful strategies were nice, meaning they started off cooperating by playing split, and forgiving, meaning that they wouldn't do what Grim Trigger does and fully stop cooperating once the opponent played steel. I guess the fact that nice and forgiving strategies are the best is a good sign for society. And that's the end of this session. If you enjoyed the topic, there's a very good website called Nikki Cases Evolution of Trust, which goes into more detail. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your virtual maths camp.